good morning okay so what we have seen in our last class that uh, if there is a crack present in a material due to presence of that crack on that cracked body if i give some load tensile load say then there will be plastic zone formation and this plastic zone dimension we have measured by some certain method and that is equal to rp 1 by 2 pi k 1 by an equation of this kind is not it. Okay. So, we have seen that the plastic zone dimension r p is equal to 1 by 2 pi k 1 by sigma y s whole square. This may be last class we have written sigma square a by uh, sigma y square etcetera. If you multiply pi up and down you will get a form of that equation looks like this. Okay. And also it is the plastic zone size uh, by you can say this is under plane stress condition. Okay. This is the plastic zone size which we have measured or uh, we have derived this equation for plane stress condition. If it is under plane strain condition, then the plastic zone size will be if it is under plane strain condition, then this plastic zone size will be little bit smaller compared to the plastic zone that we have calculated earlier. For this we do not have any further calculation, but you just consider that it will be 1 by 6 pi k 1 by sigma y s whole square if we consider a plane strain condition. Okay. And you have, uh, you have been known that in our last class we said that this is there is some plastic zone correction as per correction this is the equation. So, this correction was proposed by Irwin. I think the name I did not mention yesterday. So, this correction we have some certain R p star we have seen that R p star equal to something like of this equation. So, this is one particular correction which is as per the correction methods of Irwin. Okay. There are several other researchers who also have done some corrections all of those are not in our syllabus rather another one which is there as this is mentioned in our syllabus. So, I will just give you the final expression because again deriving all that equations and that again requires some other basics. So, those things we are not incorporating only thing is there is another one which is known as Dugdale's approach. So, as per Dugdale's approach also we can have one particular plastic zone correction okay. and we will see the final expression as per Dugdale. So, this one is Irwin and as per Dugdale's approach the plastic zone size is represented by rho in that if you see the Broex book then it is equal to 8 by pi almost similar to that if you compare this sorry it is pi by 8 you just reverse it sorry pi by 8 k 1 by sigma y s whole square. So, you can compare what is 1 by 2 pi what is pi by 8 these two if you are comparing you will have some idea this whether these are very closer or at a uh, big difference is there, but if you consider the values of this k by sigma y s for higher values like k means nothing but sigma root pi a. So, for that sigma by sigma y a square when, when this is high in that case we use the uh, plastic zone correction made by Irwin. Okay. If the sigma by sigma y s this is high in that case we use the Irwin's method and there we see that the difference is becoming larger okay, due to effect of that sigma by sigma y s. And, uh, what else is there left? So yes. This one is for plane stress, right. Dugdale's method, what I have written is for plane stress that you have to consider. Okay. The approach of that Dugdale method is similar to this one. Yesterday we have considered 
will not go for entire derivation, but here also we have to consider a virtual crack length. What we basically consider in this is you have a certain crack, but due to plastic zone, we are considering there is the as if the crack length is little larger and that extra part of this crack length is trying to close. That is only the Dugdale's approximation that we have a certain crack length, but due to presence of plastic zone as if the crack is little longer and the extra part that is this part both the sides will try to be closed. Okay. So, I have certain k here, certain k in this region, these two we are comparing and telling that, uh, uh, that derivation in that way we are finding out that the final expression of plastic zone looks like in this manner. Please see Broek's book once for this. Okay. So, for Dugdale method I think it is, uh, it may not be there every books. So, please see the book of Broek once for this. Okay. Till now what we have considered is uh, the shape of plastic zone. Right. For consideration of uh, this derivation what we did at uh, theta equal to 0 in our last class what we have seen. Right. At theta equal to 0 for some certain distance r what is the plastic zone size. We also have calculated that way that it is a circular path as if, is not it? Whatever the diagrams we have drawn in our last class was shown that plastic zone is a circular path, but it is not the case. Plastic zone size is or shape of the plastic zone is not a circular path. Okay, so, it is different. So, how can we have that difference? Now, we know something about von Mises yield criteria or Tresca yield criteria. Have you heard these things earlier? Yes, all of you know this, right. Then, uh, may I ask what is as per von Mises yield criteria sigma not equal to? Bolo? Bolo. Let us set that to the power half, right. So, as per von Mises yield criteria, we have seen that uh, the sigma naught that is the yield strength level is equal to 1 by root 2 into the principal stresses sigma 1 minus 2 whole square plus 2 minus 3 whole square 3 minus 1 whole square whole to the power half, etcetera. What rather it tells? Now, it tells about the yield surface. That means what? Now, if there is a yielding in a material, then how rather this is the mathematical expression of that inside this I have all elastic, outside this if I go then that will be the region of plasticity. Okay. So, that we see from the yield criteria, mathematical representation of yielding behavior of a material. Okay. Now, as we are discussing about the shape of plastic zone or you can say uh, that loci of plastic region, then we have to consider any of this distortion energy theory or that maximum shear stress criteria, etc. Okay. And from those values, those values means what? Now, we know if we consider, if we consider the um, uh, stress distribution ahead of a crack, that is what now sigma y equal to, we have seen something like case k by root over 2 pi r cos theta by 2 into something. So, those things are my sigma x, sigma y, sigma z terms and tau x y etcetera terms. Okay. If you have little bit uh, idea on the classes that I have uh, taken in last few days, you can visualize this. Okay. So, from that sigma x y, you have to find out the principal stresses. What is sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 etcetera. Okay. And then have to incorporate in this particular equation. Then we will find one expression for the plastic zone. Now, you ask me because that I will tell you now to do. You have confusion to so ask me. I will give you a question that determine the 
plastic zone shape ahead of a crack tip as per von Mises yield criteria. Say sigma z you need not to consider okay, in plain stress condition you have to do. Okay, so, for that what you need you have to see your notebook where sigma y, sigma x and tau x y terms are given and in two dimension that is under plane stress the sigma 1, sigma 2 can be computed as that also I am giving that sigma 1 or sigma 2 equal to we can say sigma x plus sigma y by 2. plus minus root over bolo shai sigma x minus sigma y by 2 whole square plus tau x y square. This is the equation. Okay. So, the equation is to find out because if I see this equation I have to put the principal stresses and what I have the stress distribution ahead of a crack tip that is sigma x, sigma y and tau x y. I said you to calculate this in plane stress that means sigma z term is not there. So, if it is not there then in two dimension what I have to put is sigma 1 and sigma 2 values. So, if I have sigma 1 and sigma 2 values then I can incorporate this in this equation and calculate it is not it. So, if it is plane stress you need not to calculate sigma 3 sigma 3 will be equal to 0. Okay. So, sigma 1 and 2 will be x plus y by 2 plus minus this equation. So, you have sigma x term, sigma y term, you find out what is sigma x plus sigma y by 2. Dekho. If you do not have your notebook, then I can help you in this way that sigma y equal to k 1 by what it is? It is sigma root over 2 pi r, right? Yes. Root over 2 pi r cos theta by 2 1 minus sin theta by 2 sin 3 theta by 2. Yes. For sigma y it is plus So, see your notebook, you will find out you can get the sigma x, sigma y and tau x y terms okay, which is of this kind sigma x equal to k 1 by root over 2 pi r cos theta by 2 into 1 minus sin theta by 2 sin 3 theta by 2 and tau x y equal to you can see. Okay. So, if you have all those things you put sigma x plus sigma y by 2 it is very simple if you want mean, once you start it you will find this will be cancelled. So, it is very small equation actually you will get after this computation. Okay. So, do it with patience all of you please I am insisting that you do this. Okay. Once you have done it you will have some idea and it is not very critical. Because once of one problem of this kind in any of our mid same or class test or end same you may get. So, it is better to compute what is the dimension of plastic zone as per von Mises criteria. So, if I do sigma x plus sigma y by 2, this term will be cancelled, 2 2 will be cancelled, it will be only k 1 by root over 2 pi r cos theta by 2, na ki? the first term. Then sigma x minus sigma y by 2, what it will give? Now, in that case, you will have little bit this part common and this part will be there. So, I will have k 
के वन बुट ओभार टू पाई आर इंटू दिस प्लस दिस दैट इज सैन थीटा ब टू कस थीटा ब टू एंड सैन थ्री थीटा ब टू ओके सो इज दे टल रईट दैट वज माइनस माइनस वी प्लस एंड दैट वे आई उल हैव अर्निक आफ्टर द क्लस आई उल सी योर नोटबुक इफ यू हैव डान देन ओनलि आई उल गिव यू एटेंडेंस टूडे ओके सो देन होल स्कोर सिग्मा एक्स माइनस वाई बै टू होल स्कोर एंड टाउ एक्स वाई स्कोर यू जस्ट डू द होल स्कोर एंड एट देम आप यू उल फाइंड सैन स्कोर थीटा बै टू प्लस सैंस क स्कोर थीटा बै टू कैंड अफ दैट एंड ए स्म इक्वेशन यूल बी इन योर हैंड ओके सो हियर आई हैव एक्स माइनस वाई बै टू होल स्कोर सो यू डू दिस होल स्कोर टेक दिस ओनलि थिंग इज यू टेक दिस पार्ट कमन के वन बै डोट ऑफर टू पाई आर कस थीटा बै टू दैट यू कीप कमन ओके देन डू द रेस्ट अफ द थिंगस एंड टाउ एक्स वाई स्कोर यू हैव टाउ एक्स वाई एक्सप्रेशन यू हैव द टाउ एक्स वाई एक्सप्रेशन पुट दैट एंड ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट only keep k1 by root over 2 pi r cos theta by 2 common then do rest of the things inside whole square or inside square root whatever you have that you do got it so I'll get sigma one, sigma two in this manner. K one by root over two pi r into cos theta by two into one plus minus sin theta by two. That means sigma one and sigma two is one is plus, another one is minus, which is algebraically greater. The sigma one always sigma one, sigma two, sigma three of this sigma one is the algebraically greatest one that we take, okay? And three is the smallest one. That is as per abbreviation, as per rule we are taking. Okay, so if you do this sigma one, sigma two only, that is the principal stresses we will get sigma one, sigma two. ओके आफ्टर दैट यू हैव लिटिल बिट बिगर थिंग टू डू कम्प्यूट दैट इज व्हाट इज द डायमेंशन ऑफ द प्लास्टिक जोन दैट यू हैव टू डू यू जस्ट पुट इट इन द इक्वेशन देन आई विल डू दिस बिकॉज द इक्वेशन इज ऑफ दिस काइंड राइट सिग्मा वन माइनस टू होल स्क्वायर प्लस टू माइनस थ्री होल स्क्वायर बट इफ इट इज अंडर प्लेन स्ट्रेस कंडीशन देन थ्री वॉन्ट बी देयर सो टू स्क्वायर प्लस सिग्मा वन स्क्वायर एटसेट्रा and this again you keep this thing common entire thing you keep common outside because this is whole square whole square whole square whole to the power half so everything will be outside k1 by root over 2 pi r cos theta by 2 only this will be outside and in case of sigma 1 you have to write 1 plus sin theta by 2 minus sigma 2 is minus 1 plus sin theta by 2 so here you will be only having you can visualize sin square theta by 2 2 square it is 1 plus sin theta by 2 whole square another case 1 minus sin theta by 2 whole square that you put and a square plus b square equation you keep again you will have some small equation or somehow whatever you feel like to calculate this one you try to calculate
could you get anything in final form? Try karo, thoda try karo. You go up to some certain at least. If you cannot reach the final expression, even you can go up to some certain step. <coughs> Okay, so do this, this one you expand or something and then after that you take this cos theta by 2 inside by making it cos square theta by 2. Okay. So, if you take this cos theta by 2 inside then it will be 4 sin square theta by 2 cos square theta by 2 that is 2 sin theta by 2 cos theta by 2 whole square that will give you 1 sin square theta. Hena? Similarly, in this also cos theta by 2 sin theta by 2 they will combine and give you some equation of that uh, sin 2 theta cos 2 theta etcetera. Only this cos theta by 2 which is there outside now you put it inside and you will get this expression in terms of theta. Try it little bit then I will give you the final expression. From the beginning if you put cos theta by 2 inside oh, hodgepodge one ka chances jada hota hai. So, what we will do is now we will put this cos theta by 2 inside and try to make this in a simplified manner. Okay. So, if you do this, you will find an equation of this kind that sigma naught square equal to k 1 square by 8 pi r into that all in terms of theta. You can keep in terms of theta by 2 also that is up to you, but this is the expression which you may find in many books. So, this kind of equation will actually give you some idea about with theta how the dimension of plastic zone varies. That means what? If this equation say you are fitting in origin or somewhere okay, and take different values of theta. So, at different theta values how the plastic zone dimension changes you can plot. Can you do this? So, that is your assignment 2. Okay. That what you have to do is you take this equation put in origin and take different values of theta. If you do uh, take different values of theta, you will get different values of r plastic zone size. So, you can find out one particular shape of a curve for theta and r then and we can tell that different theta values this is the variation of plastic zone. Okay. Instead, now I will give you the shape how it looks. So, with x and y as per von Mises criteria, this is the shape of a plastic zone. You plot this, you may get, get this kind of a figure. Okay. So, from here another thing what we can do is, we can have some uh, differentiation to find out at which theta value the plastic zone size is maximum. Okay, at which theta value at which angle the plastic zone size is maximum. You can do this right uh, dr d theta then uh, find out at which theta. So, that is again you have to do by yourself. So, that is your you need not to submit me anything for that, but this is your home assignment you can think, think that uh, do it in excel or origin whatever you find plot rather not write the software name. Then we can have maximum size of the plastic zone. So, by plotting you can get the shape. So, what is the maximum and minimum of the plastic zone size? Another one you have to find is I have written this one as per 
distortion energy criteria, this is von Mises criteria. So, as per Triska criteria also we can have some shape of a plastic zone. Okay. So, what is as per Triska criteria? The shape only you have to find out that as per Triska criteria how the plastic zone shape looks like. Okay. So, these three things you have to find out as per Triska criteria, as per uh, what is the maximum R, as per this equation and what is the plot look like that is you have to find out. Any question up to this? Bolo. You need some yield strength value. So, that you consider something, this is a constant, that is also a constant. You consider something, 1, 2 does not mean anything, any yet change in the shape. 100, 200, 50, 5000. So, these things are not very important. Okay. So, then based on this size of the plastic zone, we have different branches of fracture mechanics. Okay. Based on the size of plastic zone, we have different branches of fracture mechanics. If the plastic zone size is very small, in which case it is small, we will uh, tell in some other class. But if the plastic zone size is very small, that means what? It is known as EPFM, that is, uh, sorry, LEFM. LE FM. If the plastic zone size is very small, then it is known as LEFM, that is linear elastic fracture mechanics. Linear elastic fracture mechanics. Why it is linear elastic? You try to visualize that plastic zone size is small, that means plastic deformation is small. So, plastic deformation is small means what load deformation curve will have less. So, I will have only a linear part of the curve. So, I have that is known as linear elastic fracture mechanics. For that again we have different kinds of experiments what we do, those things we will see later. But if the plastic zone size is little bit higher than this, then we call that as a EPFM, elastic plastic fracture mechanics. And if it is uh, entirely large, we uh, call this as GYFM, that is gross yielding fracture mechanics. You can visualize in this manner, say this is a particular fracture mechanics sample, means fracture toughness mechanically example. Then these are the, that way. So, when the plastic zone size ahead of the crack tip is very small, that is the first one. Then, if it is moderate, that means it is not going up to the other end of the specimen, but in between somewhere and then if it goes up to the other end of the specimen. Based on that, we have different branches of fracture mechanics. Okay? These are known as this LEFM, EPFM. These abbreviations may not be, yes, abbreviations also we use, but when we will be telling, we do not tell in this term, right. It is LEFM, linear elastic fracture mechanics, EPFM, elastic plastic fracture mechanics and GYFM, gross yielding fracture mechanics. Okay. Is that all right to you? So, please read.